Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. I hope you had a good we Easter, 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 Easter weekend. Um, but uh, we're back. We're back in the politics. We're back in the discussion, the podcasts, and all of that kind of stuff. So time for the content to come back. Um, I kept you late. Someone said DEI, DEI timekeeping in the tr chat. And I saw so, so, someone say, are you trolling us? Which actually, uh, I wasn't trolling you, but um, if I hadn't read that comment, I would have, I probably would have dawdled for another five minutes. That was, that pushed me over the edge. Are you trolling us? And I felt bad. So I just hit the live button and I wasn't even really ready to go live necessarily. Um, ba -ba -ba. So I'm just looking at a few things here. So yeah, um, I want to talk about a couple of topics tonight. And um, one is this story that the, if it would just pop up in front of me, government seeks pre-election pact with tech giants amid supercharged uh, disinformation threats. So the Irish state are trying to um, get their ducks in a row before the elections that are going to occur this year, 2024. Um, there's a bit of a populist uprising nationalist populist nationalist conservative whatever you want to call it a sort of a right-wing populist i said that word like three times um backlash against insane policies inevitable and uh they're all clearly trying to get ready for that uh you there are lots of candidates running now some people have maps up of like where candidates are running and it's increasingly covering the country now are they all going to get elected no do they have any major backing no Will any of them get elected? I can't even guarantee that. I don't know. But it's gone from being an impossibility and a complete irrelevancy, this kind of national, this nationalist populism, to being extremely central to all political discourse in Ireland and uh, set to be the next electoral block in the Irish doll or parliament. Um, and that's a bit of a big deal because, of course, one of the policies in Ireland over the last, and I don't have sources for this tonight there's too many things out there i'm just speaking casually here like uh one of the policies and there is some evidence for this i just don't know where it is have it to hand right now there is some evidence that there is actively a policy within irish politics since about the early 2000s when they started the immigration story um specifically regarding immigration more so than uh, the abortion debate more so than lgbt or women in the home or any of that stuff specifically with the immigration policy there was a or immigration practice there was a policy within the deepest confines of the political establishment um not to talk about it this idea that ireland would be above that so like you have right-wing politics in spain and italy and america in different ways um, even in in the uh, britain but uh, Ireland was, uh, they they went down this road of somehow just not talking about it. No politician would run. There would be NGOs waiting to stifle any opposition and sort of among the mainstream, they just wouldn't indulge in that. They wouldn't, or whatever the word is, they wouldn't, it wouldn't engage in that at all. That would be completely verboten. And we would just pretend it's not there. Elephant in the room type of stuff. Um, talk about everything. Talk about healthcare over subscription. Talk about housing. Talk about everything. But you don't talk about the 250,000 people that were brought into Ireland, foreigners, the foreigner population increased in Ireland by a quarter of a million people, just came out recently, uh, this fact, a quarter of a million people in t between 22 and 23. Um, I remember when I was predicting that to be 200,000 and I was sort of taking liberties to sort of speculate that figure. And I thought I was being a little bit daring with that figure, but we have 250,000, a quarter of a million in a country of 5 million people in one year. A country which is already totally screwed with housing and healthcare and everything else. So, um, given that that's been the case, that they have been tamping down on that since the early 2000s, I've always felt like there's a bit of a genie in the bottle type of situation where once this kind of breaks, uh, the wave breaks on this, who knows where it goes? Because unlike another country where there might be a rise in this kind of discourse and politics, let's say, hypothetically, Ireland has bottled it up for so long. We haven't had any venting. It's all been, any criticism is all far right, so-called, is all uh, racist and everything else, and is all ascribed to people like me and others who are sort of, we're not given the, the title of a citizen or legitimate person. 
um, in this country. So basically what you are is you're you're seen or you're viewed not by people, but by the media and by the establishment as a anyone who talks openly about this stuff, as I do, is sort of relegated to um, unpersonhood effectively. Like, you know, you can kind of exist. You may get away with not getting your door kicked in by the guards for no reason, but you're not a real person. You, you are just someone on, you're these online, like, you're this online shadowy figure when they use the, the when they post these articles about the dangers of the far right and they have a, a silhouette typing into a laptop or speaking into a microphone, you're that. You're this vague uh, sort of demonic figure that you it doesn't even get referred to. They talk about the far right, the far right, the far right all day long and they never refer to the people's names. They never say, oh, well, the far right... Uh, and I'm not taking ownership of that term, but they 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 wouldn't say they wouldn't say a person's name and say this person has this view. They just don't do that. So uh, besides that, you don't have a voice like on mainstream television and the radio and uh, in polite society and in the workplace. There's no sort of uh, center right institution whereby or or mildly anti-immigration institution. It's just it's it's basically all or nothing, right? Uh, that's the way the regime has seen it. So when that damn breaks it'll be quite interesting when you have hypothetically as a derek Bly in the doll or in the european parliament or or whoever you name it michael lee he, the list goes on um or maybe just a more general populist but someone who's simpatico with the likes of me um that's because what's going to happen after that is that fence sitters people who let's say quietly would watch the likes of what i'm doing now um or follow the stories on Twitter and online, just uh, generally have a feeling against um, liberalism and immigration. People who are very, and I'm not criticizing people now, but basically people with high human capital, people who have high agency and are earning good incomes and are doing well or have a lot to lose in their lives and they feel like they would never get involved in this stuff as it is, suddenly they say, whoa, that guy got elected and now he's got like a salary and he's got the legitimacy of office. So, I mean, if he can do that, then I'm really cool in my own life, you know, and I do agree with most of their points and I haven't gotten myself into controversies or I haven't been loose lipped. And, uh, but I do believe in this stuff. So maybe, do you know what? Maybe the time is, I'll say what Garrod's saying, but I'll be very careful about it from day one. I do believe in this stuff, but I also care about my own self-interest to an extent. So I will just run for this office because I think it's, it's there for the picking. The first people who've gotten in, the Derricks or the whoever's, have demonstrated that, and now I'm going for it. Let's start. And so that that it could take off like wildfire, I think. There, and you would a mix of you would have a mix of legitimate and less legitimate and sincere people. But either way, just like we wouldn't know who are the real sincere people and who are the opportunists jumping on the bandwagon, the regime would also not quite know, to be honest. And uh, here, off we go. We're off to the races. And this whole media ecosystem in Ireland now is not just something that can be ignored, all the streamers and posters on Twitter and all that who've been around for years, they can't just be ignored. They are now the maybe slightly radical wing of a central political narrative in the country, or the central political narrative in the country. So again, the elections, you know, how much can a politician get done in office? Um, I don't know. I Maybe when you get in there, it, we, everything would just be getting shut down around you. But... Uh, but it's the symbolism of it. Never mind the actual policy that you may or may not be able to put into effect. But it's 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 the dam breaking. That's what's significant about it. So they are, they are. Um, let's pull up my screen. Yeah, they are looking to sort of um, connect with tech giants in Ireland to somehow figure out how to stifle or censor this growing dissent. And uh, how exactly they're going to go about doing that is unclear. I will get into it a little bit. I haven't done a full in-depth research of this. I think you would need, from what I've concluded, I'm busy these days a little bit with, uh, I just always seem to have kids. Uh, kids and this kind of like deep diving don't go well together. But uh, anyway, I do love both. But uh, but um, so from what I have looked at, it's sort of, it's a case that they're not being specific. They're, they're, they're intentionally keep, keeping it vague and bureaucratic and dry and, Confusing, effectively, by um, by design, I think. Um, but we have <laughs> what we have got is like seven different commissions and reports and EU things and Irish state things. 
all of these things are in play with this vague corporate speak language but suffice it to say it's just about shutting it down it maybe it could be about um and this is why i have to speculate because they do not say it could be a litigious thing it could be about wrapping candidates up in unnecessary bureaucracy and targeting them with that and just wrapping them up in in that uh easily putting a foot wrong with a bit of red tape um and being singled out for it something like that it could also be the funding is an issue and again like i say none of it is spelled out so i'm just speculating i'm just reading the tea leaves because that's all you can call what they've put out there at this point i think um another aspect could be funding so i'm all for funding being legitimate and all of that for candidates but that's one of the things they hone in on is like um any advertising funding being totally linked back to the person i suppose who made the funding or did the ad or whatever it strikes me that like ordinarily that would be good for democracy and it would be a legitimate thing in in elections i suppose that's a good thing and the trouble arises not in that within itself but when a candidate is running and they need support where they can get it financial otherwise um from legitimate citizens who want to support them as is a political right in this country people can support Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin and all of that uh however um while someone might want to vote for and support a candidate take Derek Blight take Martin Murphy take Fergus Power whoever Philip Dwyer you name it Amanda Gallagher um if someone wants to support any or all of these types of people they they might not want their name on it because um of course there is an industry in this country to target and harass and try to destroy the lives of anybody involved in this kind of stuff even though it's on the cusp of being the majority politics in this country regardless of that it somehow it is still verboten somehow it is at the same time um forbidden and so you know you might have some guy jerry o'sullivan living somewhere random part of the country ordinary guy makes six figures he makes 160 70 grand a year doing really well for himself single you know um just a high agency person does well for himself and he follows this kind of stuff and he, he has more money than he needs and he wants to support it well if his thing is made public his donation well there goes the job in the tech company which is turns this into one big vicious cycle doesn't it um or wherever it might be uh so he might of course in advance of all that happening just not do it like a person will make that kind of calculation in their own mind before they even it becomes a conscious thought so like a chilling effect of basically um so that's what i i worry about that too this whole idea of electoral transparency and donations i don't know what the exact rules are but i i think if something is pro politically verboten and massive tech giants and state agencies and all of this will punish someone by trying to take their job and their family and their livelihood everything well in that case you've got a bit of a problem if you take that away if somehow you account for that then we can have full transparency and tom dick and harry can make a donation and make a completely public happy days no problem there and um, if that's the case fine but it's not so that's another concern and then uh lastly and most importantly last but not least is the as the title or the headline in this article suggests misinformation and disinformation targeting or challenging that the amount of euphemisms in this it's like reading the most boring awful workplace policy document and yet you know hidden in there it, it's not boring at all it's tyrannical it's extreme it's got big plans behind it and yet the way they put it out there is the driest stuff ever so i'm kind of like what i tell you is effectively the shorthand of what's really happening and i can read a million articles going through this stuff and it, it'll put you to sleep um and me as well but uh so that's kind of the challenge of even talking about this stuff in a way but um and i might talk about one or two other things tonight as well but um let's just go for a quick look through this article is it up yeah okay so i'll just read through it and sort of like yeah skim through it um, threats deeply corrosive to our democratic discourse are the focus of EU and dom domestic le legislation. The government will seek a pre-election pact with technology giants to counter disinformation in the face of supercharged threats in advance of local European and general elections to be held in the next 12 months. Minister for Housing Dara O'Brien and another minister 
say I'm already on blah, blah, blah mode, have written to a lobby group for some of the largest tech multinationals operating in Ireland, asking them for talks later this month. So here's another thing, just for what it's worth. The way the article is written, it refers to different things. I don't know, is it just bad writing? Uh, but it'll refer to a tech multinational lobby group in the first or second par second little paragraph there, like I described. And then what it'll do is actually only come back around to mentioning what that exact tech multinational lobby group is called in like the sixth paragraph. They'll kind of get back to it. And they'll mention something else in the third paragraph in a general sense, but then refer to specifically which body it's the election integrity accord, the this, the that, the other, all this like very confusing, like, you know, 12 different bits of jargon or uh, titles. So it's like you're reading it and I had to kind of, maybe I'm just like slow or something, you know, that, that's going to get clipped. But um, <laughs> that's like an Alex Jones thing, uh, you know, anyway. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, you I, I had to kind of almost um, like do a pastiche and kind of read through it like three times and try to like match it back up as opposed to something that just reads naturally, referring from one thing to another chronologically. Um, so anyway, the tech multinational lobby group uh, we later discover in this article is called the Technology Ireland. It's like connected to IBEC, blah, blah, blah. They have big fancy conferences all the time. They're effectively a, like, I don't know what a lobby group in my view lobbying at this scale is just straight up corruption but of course they're not going to say we we can just get governments to do what you want and then ultimately you will do what the government is want will want as well like you know they just say oh we're just, you know a representative uh we're representing companies in the sector and that's it but of course much bigger um things are happening behind all of the um cozy or not cozy but the corporate graphics and this corporate speak so anyway point being this is who they represent you could see for yourself there airbnb amazon and um, all the big ones ibm intel hp um yeah TikTok, everything right um so that's what that's referring to anyway just for your information and um, yeah uh, so the ministers are asking for them asking them to talks warning that threats are deeply corrosive to our democratic discourse i'm not going to do quote marks on this i'll just read it and the companies will be asked to sign up to a new election integrity accord again i looked that up not quite clear uh, what exactly that is but it's in the workings on the eve of elections that come after the longest period in the history of the state without a nationwide party political contest being held the ministers wrote to technology ireland um this is more of what I'm talking about here coming up. So it says a range of EU and domestic laws have been passed or are in train to attempt to counter the threats of disinformation and misinformation interfering online in the electoral process. Now, just, you know, again, it's just kind of the way it's written. So a range of EU and domestic laws. I mean, in my view, I'd be like, why don't you just say a range of EU and domestic laws and then have like seven bullet points and just insert the ones you're talking about. What are you talking about? You know, so I know they exist. I know what they probably imply and intend to do. But I mean, do I have to go looking for like vaguely and do I have to read your mind? Anyway, there's just a noise. If I, said that, if I was writing an article and I said a range of laws, I would just refer to what they are. Um, and anyway, regardless of that, they've been passed or are on the way to being passed to counter threats of disinformation and misinformation. Here's the other thing that they never do. Um, they never describe what that means. So they neither, neither describe exactly what they mean by disinformation and misinformation. Um, that could be anything, obviously. They don't describe exactly what they mean. They also don't describe what they mean by it will attempt to counter the threats. What does countering a threat mean? Does that mean banning someone from the internet? Does that mean suing someone? Does that mean arresting them? Does it mean demonetizing them? What does it mean? Just tell me. Tell me what it means. Nah, not going to happen. So uh, you've to kind of just really, it's almost, you almost can gain more from this stuff, I find. Even though it's interesting, and if you could do a three hour court deposition where you try to piece together exactly what they mean and sort of put it all together in one big argument. But in reality, you read the headline, you glean what you know it obviously all means, and that will tell you more than reading the detail of what they're telling you, if you get what I mean. Your intuition and your immediate reaction and the, the obviousness of what's contained within the headline, in a sense, 
tells you more than what they're actually telling you when they expand on it um so, because it's all uh, kind of double speak you know so the government however has yet to commence parts of the electoral reform act i have tabs pulled open on all of these but you can imagine if i go into all of these things you can kind of look them up yourself if you're interested but like i say it all just means the same thing trying to stifle political opposition um so the electoral reform act this is like the if you include the eu measures that he didn't mention which is probably like six or seven uh, there's the also the the election integrity accord and the electoral reform act so these are all the like we're hitting all these buzzes and um, which are seen as of key importance as they introduce new obligations on online platforms and buyers of advertising the accord will consist of a set of principles and sector they wrote which will cover both political advertising transparency and disinformation in line with the electoral reform act passed by the government in 2022 as well as eu requirements blah 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 a summit with of the companies with the department of housing which is in charge of matters pertaining to election uh has been proposed for april 24th in the mansion house so this will be a grand affair meanwhile the people they're talking about i'm not trying to be like make uh have delusions of grandeur here but they're not talking about me specifically big on, like big screen all me uh no but i'm part of what they're talking about that's not a that's not a boast let's necessarily but what i'm saying is just to make the point that they're going to be meeting in the mansion house and you have all these intels and everything else the, the, this whole world the whole regime in its biggest broadest truest form is doing all of this with um you know exquisite dining in a mansion house all dressed up everybody paid six figures each this whole situation right all effectively by their own words to counter something like what i'm doing now i mean i probably don't have that many viewers but um some 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 big views on and some small views depends on what it is but uh, I, effectively i'm a small fish i'm sitting here in my and just to take me as an example um i'm a small fish sitting here in my normal house in my normal life with my normal jumper and my normal travel mug and i'm just i've just got a load of tabs open in front of me i didn't even have that much time to go into it all but i'm just talking about it and i'm not um afraid effectively I, I i crossed that rubicon years ago so it's i am what i am now i'm just a person who's just not worried about them doxing me or something that's done and uh and whatever else they do to me i've made peace with the fact that so be it so so with all that said and done i am now just sitting here just talking about normal things things that are pretty obvious things that are fairly evidenced and actually at the end of the day extremely reasonable just speaking against abuses of power corruption and uh exploitation and that's it um and they're doing all that to counter the likes of this and you can name all the others like you've you've um you've big names in ireland too you've um you've uh, like various different people like look at keith he's a big deal uh internationally and i think there's a few others we've we've a whole range of different types of people but whether it's some streamer or some telegram poster anonymous who posts really interesting irish history take archiving irish diversity or whether it's keith who's got big international clout and all that at the end of the day it's just a bunch of lads on their own with their computers and their phones who just kind of want to tell the truth it's crazy when you think about it and i mentioned the the power and the money of these institutions for a reason is because i looked uh, through a few more bits and what you see constantly is this um i'm just trying to change my screen there yeah so what you see um through uh, shot through all of this is sort of like more what they used to call quangos or ngos or some form of ngo or commission like for targeting misinformation isd this that and the other and um, excuse me there are so many of those that like and they've each got a committee or a board or whatever of like you know 10 people and you know they're all being paid reasonably well they have expenses and they're on a board of one thing and another thing at the same time so they're all paid fairly handsomely um and by the time you've gotten to like through like and i, I all i did was like an, a couple of hours of research here on my phone before i went live like i knew what i wanted to talk about but i wanted to get, get a little bit of detail um specific detail and it took me back to when i used to research this stuff more thoroughly years ago which is that you look into one aspect of the situation just one just the targeting missing disinformation for elections just look into that specific niche 
of the politi political NGO industry. And you start to go, I'm already, I'm, I must be on like person 60. I must be on like 60 people by now who are probably all on a decent wage. They're part of, you know, organization number 432. Just like you, you start to wonder, how are there this many people in the country? You know, when you factor for nurses and, and doctors and uh, plumbers and everything else, like how are there this many like old, like old money and sort of um, like the doggy, like the almost like the redundant doggy offspring, you know, who like there's no roles for them anymore. Or upper various upper middle class people or people who climb up through the universities, maybe through the student unions and all this, these this kind of chattering class or whatever you want to call it. How are there enough of them to fill all these boards? You know, I know where the money the money is endless. Fair enough, but they they have there's so many people working on this stuff all the time and that's their full job and um, so and, and the whole thing is uh, like everywhere you see conferences um, and you know the whole thing is just wind and dine this whole industry is massive um it's sort of a monster to be honest but um i mean it, i could go on a bit more about that uh, here's the thought i had recently regarding this is like you know you have someone like ml mlane spallen or or um, what's her name? There's this other one. Uh, the, loads of them. Um, the ones who are higher up and they're sort of very, the, the double barrel name brigade who are on like a bunch of committees of NGOs and their waking lives are spent sort of um, being paid to harass ordinary people who have no connections, probably no family backgrounds in this stuff, no money, persecution left, right and center of them who are just trying to tell what they believe to be the truth, what factually is the truth in most cases. And their job is to not just hunt them down, but to sort of analyze every last keystroke of what that person says and come up with the most devious, double speaking, snaky ways to try and crush them without crushing them too much that you do them a favor. Like it's all, it's thought out to the nth degree. And that's their job all day long is policy document after policy document after policy document about just what are effectively, and I'll say this by myself, what are effectively proles who are sitting there just trying to use their critical faculties to push back against the worst excesses of corporate and state exploitation. And that's their job, right? And yet when they come home to their like their sort of fancy house and their like uh, their fancy car and their fancy house and fancy everything, a nice long driveway with the lampposts and all that and uh, they get in and they have their probably brazilian au pair hand the kid back to them and the rest of it um at some point their kid gets slightly old enough while they're like on their xbox or whatever to be like so oh, mom what, what do you actually do i know you're like an office job and you're always on, on the phone in the office and uh sometimes you go out to things and stuff like that um but what do you actually do? You have some sort of office type thing. That's what kids are usually like. They don't really understand. Most adults wouldn't understand. And they say, yeah, what do you do? And she says, oh, um, I work to I work to protect basically vulnerable groups from exploitation from bad people. And I fight back against people who tell lots of lies. And uh, I'm basically what I'm there for is to protect vulnerable people and uh, make sure that society stays nice and good and all this kind of stuff. And that's probably their, if they were asked by a loved one or someone near to them, that's how they would describe it. And yet that kid or that friend or whatever has no idea the the demonic deviousness of uh, and how they are working with the establishment to cr actually crush oppress people and um, take people's rights as citizens away in the most um, sneaky fashion possible and obsess over them and uh, oppress them. You know, I wonder about their personal lives. I wonder, are they aware of what they're doing? You know, how can you not be aware? How can you not be studying people like us all day long and just kind of say, you know what? The guy sort of has a point. I mean, he's not making stuff up. What he's saying is is reasonable, if I'm being honest. And um, I mean, surely the guy kind of has rights. So what the hell am I doing here, getting a full salary, watching, analyzing the content and all of this and coming up with ways to deprive that person of their rights to participate in the market of ideas. Why am I doing this? What, what the hell am I? Like, I wonder if they're self-aware. Anyway, um, um, or maybe it's just money, money, money. I don't know. So anyway, going on. Um, so, ba, ba, ba. so there's the accord is being run by the Electoral Commission. Ministers wrote that the 
years since the last nationwide elections, nationwide, excuse me, elections in Ireland have seen, quote, a number of disinformation threats to our democracy become supercharged. I think this is just going on and on. From here, it just kind of gets more, even more wishy-washy. I mean, let's be honest, that's, that's what it is. Um, yeah, just really kind of vague. So I just went on basically and decided that like, if I'm not going to get answers from this article of any use, I mean, we all pretending we don't already know what the answer, what this is all about. Um, then I'm just going to kind of open up some tabs about like disinformation in Ireland, some EU documents, some NGO documents. It's all funded by the same people who, for example, the state are liaising with here, all of these. So basically it is all the one thing. I use the word regime because you have the government, you have the big multinationals, the NGOs, which are usually paid in often equal part from both the state, Realtas and Heron, and from IBM and all of that or just from uh, international um, uh, philanthropies, which are in turn funded by these companies and sometimes even government. So it, it really is just one big thing. You know, there is there is no distinction. It's just regime, a full stop. So, yeah, I just wanted to pull up a load of random sources, sources talking about disinformation and misinformation, trying to establish, like, you know, where do you find the smoking gun of, like, what they're talking about? Even then, very hard too, because they don't really say, you know, so much. Um, they like to keep it vague. But anyway, so this is the Electoral Commission. Um, much the same. It says, uh, you go onto their page, you go to home, you go to what we do, we go to electoral integrity. It's it's on their home page, basically. You don't have to go looking for this. The first thing they mention is not making sure that people don't sneak ballots off in a box in the middle of the night. Or, you know, they don't really talk about that the f first, at least. The first thing they go to apparently to protect elections, is to monitor, investigate, and combat the dissemination of disinformation and misinformation. Um, to monitor, investigate, and identify and combat manipulative and inauthentic behavior. Again, where's the subsection for what the fuck is inauthentic behavior or, or manipulative? I mean, you could say it's somehow some foreign country. This is how they'll spin it. A foreign country like Russia or China or wherever having bots who are promoting certain messages online or something, and that's inauthentic. But you know full well that that can just go to, oh, you're being an authentic, you're being a misinformationer because you say this, that, and the other. Um, you know, especially the disinformation and mis misinformation, because of course they don't define it. And also um, it's like, for example, I could say immigration is having a massive effect on the housing crisis in Ireland and healthcare crisis, let's just say, right? said it a million times i can say that and say they can say that's that's disinformation actually that's hateful and it's disinformation because actually insert the wrong argument which is um actually we need builders for immigration and actually blah 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 they'll insert their nonsense argument so they'll based on their nonsense argument they'll say what i'm saying is thus misinformation and also what i'm saying is hateful or stirring insightful or inciting or whatever and thus, uh, I am now spreading misinformation must be targeted by the authorities in some way or silenced. But, um, but you know, obviously the shoe could just be on the other foot. Like, I mean, a minister could say, no, no, immigration has nothing to do with the housing crisis. And I could just say uh, the economic fundamental law of supply and demand, basic secondary school stuff. Uh, you brought in 250,000 foreigners in one year um, or from one year to the next uh there i mean it's it defies even making this argument you know it's it's sort of ridiculous but i could just say that and just say listen i think most people will agree with me that i'm right and you're wrong not under these guidelines not according to this regime so sorry out of luck you're the misinformation it's just it's complete nonsense to say it's orwellian is trite but it is and uh that's that so on to the next bit um this uh, random article from some random sort of, I don't know what it is. Look, it's it's bona fide enough in some sort of fashion. But uh, they're just talking about how the Irish government have committed to election integrity. Here they mentioned the legislation came amidst calls to ban cryptocurrency donations to political parties. Given the identity of donors can be concealed while using crypto, there are concerns such as donations could create an avenue for f uh, foreign funding, etc. 
Um, again, like I, I, I kind of gave the game away on that a while ago, which is like there's this obsession about funding as well, which is in some sense reasonable. But you know, if you can't say to your populist nationalist candidate who, if you're exposed for a fund, helping them, throwing them a couple of grand or whatever, uh, but you want that to be private, I mean, I, I think that's pretty fair enough. And if you don't want that to be privy to being exposed by a hostile state, that's also fair enough. So I don't know. It's a bit of a problem. Uh, were it not for cancel culture, I would be all for complete transparency. And I'm not for opaqueness either. But it is a problem, this uh, question of being cancelled, being having your life being destroyed. The cancel doesn't cover it. But uh, for supporting someone, well, what that ends up with is that people can't get financial support or even ads done and stuff like that, favours done, which uh, I don't know. Maybe we're better off. Maybe we're better off depending on pure truth and uh, the the collapsing situation in the country in itself. It's basically like that. Like It's almost like they kind of hand us a bit of anti-fragility there that we we sort of get to a point where we just don't need that. Uh, that's just a thought. So uh, <laughs> this is the just these are just random sort of errant bits of um, like different web pages from the EU and all of that. Like I said, just trying to pull the various ideas together, given that they don't do it for us. Um, the 2022 Code of Practice on Disinformation. So this is like a EU thing, but of course Ireland is involved in this. Um, major online platforms, emerging and specialist platforms, players in the advertising industry, fact checkers, research and civil society or civil society organizations delivered a strengthened code of practice on disinformation following the commission's guidance of May 2021. So I'll just try and find the bit that spoke mostly to me. This was, uh, it's the bit on fact checkers. Oh, is it this one? Um, yeah, um, the code for that this is one bit the code foresees that online platforms provide better support to research and disinformation researchers will have a better and wider access to platforms data this mean this means ensuring automated access to non-personal anonymized aggregated manifestly made public data and working towards putting in place a governance structure to simplify access to data requiring additional scrutiny researchers um and this is the best bit empowering the fact checking community now like there are a lot of things out there the traveling community the hindu community the lgbtq plus minus multiply x community whatever this is taking it to the next level that the fact checking are uh i love how they do this like they can't just be first off fact checking is a euphemism and it's bullshit but second, now they're a community right um so the new code will extend fact checking coverage across all eu member states and languages and ensure that platforms will make a more consistent use of fact-checking on their services. This is the best bit. Moreover, the code works towards ensuring fair financial contributions for fact-checkers work and better access to fact-checkers, or better access to fact-checkers to information facilitating their daily work. They said daily work. So this random fact-checking community, vague, uh, fact-checking community, need um, fair financial contributions as if they're not getting it already. Most of them are already these NGO heads anyway, but so maybe an extra remuneration on top of it for going around stalking the likes of us. Um, and uh, it's daily work, apparently. I mean, like the idea that we have a state in any sort of, like a state with sort of, um, what would you call it? Um, you know, things like rule of law, free and fair elections, the the right to a fair trial, all of like these basic canons of what we used to think were a civilized kind of society. There might be brown envelopes and nonsense happen and a, gar a local Garda corruption or speeding tickets or a little bit of local persecution, a bully, a local bully or something. But we did sort of wrongly or rightly believe that the state had sort of the idea that you can FOI stuff, you can demand you know, this kind of basic stuff like I've always said it. This when the Gardaí are constantly talking about monitoring uh, so-called agitators, political agitators. You know, you're meant to be able to have rights. Like, why can I not go to them and say, "Listen, whether it's me or whether it's other people I know, um, can we please have our files?" You know, and like, uh, I'm a citizen. I pay taxes. I was born and raised here. I haven't committed a crime because you haven't arrested me. No one's even alleged that I've committed a crime. So I have not been 
convicted, charged, and most importantly, no crime has been alleged or even suggested. So based on that, can I, if we're such a liberal state where people have rights, can I have that file there you have in your hand, right? Can I have that? Because I, I think I deserve to see that. Like, I think I'm being probably persecuted. But um, no, you can't have that. And uh, just as a side, an aside, I've always thought that was funny in uh, a part of the liberal sort of this kind of culture of the f sort of free West. A big um, piece of uh, media on that or a film on that was the lives of others about East Germany in the 80s, the early late 80s, early 90s. It's a good film, but it uh, it sort of is like a bit cartoonish in, in its own way. Um painting the West out to be this kind of free thing and the East out to be this terrible thing. It's a bit cartoonish. But one of the things they refer to in the film, which was actually true, is that when East Germany ended and the country were unified, effectively under Western sort of hegemony, um, one of the things that the West did to show the Eastern bloc how oppressed they had been was they released the Stasi files. And so... It was like this big um, truth and reconciliation moment. You know, now you get to see your file. Now you get to see that they bugged your apartment. They may have, they may have bugged your apartment. They may have followed you. They may have noted you down as a p potential agitator. All this kind of stuff. And isn't that very Soviet? Isn't that very repressive and you know? Isn't that like dark and like it shows a, a weak and a, a characterless regime that's trying to cling on to power and oppress its own people, etc. Um, they, that's what actually did happen. And yet, if you go to Germany now, or let's say Ireland, but let's say Germany, you go to Germany now, you, you can't go to the BSF or whatever they're called, the intelligence agency, which is far more totalitarian and pervasive than the Stasi ever were. That's a fact. Um, you can't, a German citizen who can't go to them and say, hey, can I get my file now? Because I know you gave me the last regime's file, which was very magnanimous of you, but can I get my now file? Because <laughs> I think that's a bit more relevant, isn't it? They would be told, no, nine. That's, you're, you're not entitled to that. Um, and it's the same here. It's like, so we're all free and fair, but I, you know, I can't uh, have rights. Anyway, um, so that's the fact checkers um, and the lives of others. So this is, uh, this is just one of the things I, I just wanted to get an idea. Like, give me a concrete example. And there was this... Um, page with subsection after subsection and eventually ended up here and it's i'll make it bigger to so you can see but um it's that uh it's basically it's kind of this weird european commission page where they go they're talking about disinformation and then there's a subsection where they talk about examples of disinformation and how it's corrected and one of the examples here is sort of the headline that you could see there is the the disinformation that they claim to go on to um uh, dispute so the EU forced Ireland into a bailout program. Now in Ireland, for those who don't know, the idea is that after 2008, we basically got screwed. We got we were forced into shouldering all of the Eurozone's uh, effectively like gambling debt, uh, corporate gambling debt. And then uh, on top of that, we had NAMA, this uh, liquidation agency that kind of took all of these distressed assets from these casino players effectively and sort of bailed them out um bailed out all of the banks and uh took these assets and sold them off for a song to wall street for the most part um who then a few years later turned around and flipped them for major money or are now pumping the country full of, of immigrants to raise it even further um you know a complete nightmare a complete disaster um totally corrupt and effectively like effectively yeah, ireland got sold out and bought and paid for and destroyed um buried after 2008 and so that's generally what the eu are the eu forced ireland into a bailout program now the specifics of that yeah can be disputed but that's generally what happened and they're trying to basically dispute that that the eu did not force ireland into a bailout program and of course that's according to them because who's telling you this the european commission you know this is the kind of like level of political like uh, liberal sophistication we have here the EU, EU are taking it upon themselves to be the fact checkers and the monitors, uh, fact checking that we actually never did anything bad ever. Actually, we've we've ran it through the machine and it has told us that wouldn't you know we've never done anything wrong. And anyone who criticizes us turns out they're actually all wrong. Uh, it's not me; it's the fact checking machine. 
uh, that's that's basically what it is, right? Um, stay on with this ramble, you know. There's probably some like minor factual truths to this, but the general thrust of the original so-called misinformation is true, you know. Um, so, ba ba ba. Uh, what's this online misinformation? So this, I just finding random articles are mentioning misinformation and all of this. Uh, foreign interference appears for this year's elections. This is in January 2024. So recent part of this whole general conversation. Online misinformation and the threat of interference from foreign actors are a source of significant concern ahead of this year's local and European elections, Ireland's media regulators, regulators said. Commission uh, Commission demands executive chairman, uh, Jeremy Godfrey, I just laugh even thinking about the guy, uh, said a number of threats exist that can threaten our democracy, blah, blah, blah. Um, the other thing too is that like they're talking about like uh, covert funding and this and that like basically the ba the premise that they're leaning on is that we all have a right to cast a vote this is the dressed up version of maybe what they're trying to imply we all have a right to a vote we all have a, maybe a right to different opinions and cast a vote as we see fit based on that but we wouldn't want sort of illegitimate voices interfering so you wouldn't want Chinese bots, you wouldn't run one Russian money or KGB or any of the CIA, Mossad, they might not mention those two, but you wouldn't want those uh, uh, interfering because, of course, that would that would kind of prejudice the whole thing. It would be better for just free citizens with free information and no outside interference, excuse me, uh, voting and coming to what they come to. That's a nice idea. They're barely even trying to say that, but let's say they were saying that. Um, what about the billion euro NGO sector? Like, what about the fact that, um, that you know, we have the, all these rules, but the likes of a Mark Malone or someone like him, because I don't know exactly what he's doing, someone like that, um, is funded ultimately by billionaire philanthropies, so called, fair enough, but also by the state. Um, various of these NGO people are funded in such a fashion and they spend their whole day, let's say, going online plotting and scheming against, let's say, Derek Bly's political run and they go on and they say, you're, you're this, that and the other. They try to blacken his name, blacklist him, try to come up with, try to analyse, because they're paid to, analyse the electoral divisions and uh, um, figure out ways to undermine him and dig up uh, Derek, anyone, I'm not specifying Derek, uh, any of these candidates dig up their some dirt on them everything else like target them put the put the laser on them and figure out ways to stop their run and, and impede their run i could very easily find a entity like that who is funded by paid by an ngo which is funded at least partially or entirely by the state i mean that's as open and shut as it gets. That's how is that not like the most egregious form of internal election interference in election interference imaginable, right? That's like Saddam Hussein kind of like levels of, you know, sort of like, listen, this isn't a real, this isn't a real election by any kind of common sense version when someone is doing that. Like if you, you know, if you, if Saddam Hussein's opponent was running and next thing, oh, he, uh, his past indiscretions and his um, tax filings and his, um, f you know, every everything you have, family issues, whatever it is, all this stuff dug up on him. His door kicked in by the guards or the police, the Iraqi police, of looking for phones and coming up with fake charges and try. Like you would just look at it, and you, you would say that's that's Mickey Mouse. Like you know what I mean? That's not that that's not an election. That's just ridiculous that's the level you're at is that kind of iraqi bathist or like i mean we like our bathist and assad is pretty okay but take at least the caricature of what saddam was that's what it is um so anyway blah 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 um godfrey this is just crazy that this is the world we live in um he's referring to the dublin riots how they tried to shut down information about that because they felt like it was illegitimate again so a crime happens. So let's say tomorrow, hopefully not, but some foreigner, crazed foreigner who had no business being in the country, who had been rejected from the asylum claims, who ha should have been deported, you know, a textbook type of situation like that, God forbid, goes and attacks a bunch of kids, let's say, right? And uh, it's open and shut. It speaks to the argument that this country is out of control. These people shouldn't be here. The system is designed so that they will be here. 
and we're against that. And now something has happened that speaks to exact our predictions. And we would like to shout it from the rooftop because it's a terrible thing that's happened. And we've been saying it all along. And now here we are and we're talking about it. The same way anyone does about any issue. Same way if a climate change activist, probably say funded, but let's say a climate change activist is talking about uh, the, you know, the great flood is going to come on, you know, if we don't, uh, whatever, make the switch. Uh, there's a bad storm in the winter and they come in and they say, look, look, here's our proof, right? Now that's much more tenuous and completely ridiculous. And yet they're entitled to, I suppose, I mean, that's a classic example because it's obviously misinformation. It's nuts. It's trying to incite a political reaction based on something that is unconnected to it, obviously. And yet no Jeremy Godfrey or whatever his name is would say, oh, we need to target that. We need to be very careful about that and shut I need to write to the social media companies and get a clamp down on. No. Like, even if Jeremy agreed that that is sort of a tenuous connection and it's actually ultimately factually misinformation and it's trying to incite political feelings based on incorrect connections being made, he would say, I mean, that might be true, but whatever. <laughs> Basically, it's not about the, the alleged nature of what's happening. It's about the, the con specific context is that they don't want us talking about immigration. They don't want us in moments where it's specific, acute and where the country is listening and something bad has happened and it's and it's what we've been talking about, they have to shut it down. So it's all just total nonsense, of course. But uh, this gravy train, this whole industry, it's got thousands. I would love to make it count at some point. If I were funded full-time to do this, maybe that's the kind of thing I would do make a big massive count of everyone not just talk about the six billion euro ngo industry because that's not quite true some of that is meals and wheels meals on wheels and everything else but you could try to arrive at an amount of people who specifically work within the political ngo sector lobbying political harassment whatever it is how many people are working and how much the how what the bill is at the end of the day it's probably a lot so what do we have here this is just another random bit tidbit it's um, about Ross Cray and all of this. It's from January 24. Again, it's recent. It's some researcher or student in uh, University of Galway, some, you know, Bure, who uh, somehow has up writing articles about misinformation and whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter who this person is, but one of those. Um, talking about disinformation, need I read through all of this? Probably not. So, she just basically shites on with the usual stuff. But then she mentions this. It caught my eye in specific. Because while we're talking about dis and misinformation, she said that... Uh, I just want to find it. So bear with me. I will find this. Damn, it's kind of annoying. Because it's, it's a short article, and I know it's in front of me. Yeah, I'm getting there, Lance. Bear with me, sorry. Um, it's that I can remember what it was. It, it's in here anyway. I'm scrolling. You can probably, if you're like up close to your screen, you can see it somewhere. I'm, I've just gone temporarily blind here and I can't hone in on it. She says that there's this idea that bringing in all of these asylum seekers and immigrants, the idea that the far right are spreading this misinformation that they are competing for scarce resources with the native population that bringing in all of these people, and she, I think she acknowledges the numbers are huge, but the far right are falsely in a disinformation or misinformation capacity saying that those asylum seekers and migrants in their hundreds of thousands thus compete with the Irish people for scarce resources. Now, what is that? Like, I mean, it's just like, there's no intelligent, honest person in the whole world can dispute that that is a fact. It's just a fact. Um, and yet this person, um, this per I really want to find it. I just want to quote it exactly, you know, but it's kind of just annoying me now. Um, but uh, I'm just trying to scan for the word scarce. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that's just a fact. Anyway, that's really annoying. That's my fault. Anyway, I just can't spot it. It's like trying to look for something in the fridge and you can't see it, but um, even though it's right in front of you. Um, yeah, this person basically ascribes that. Like, if you say that uh, all of these people are ultimately competing for scarce resources, and if you were wondering 
could that be the case? What would you do if you're trying to figure out if that's true or not? Like it's it's fundamentally axiomatically true to begin with that more people increase competition for scarce resources. We're in secondary school economics here, but say you still wanted you wanted to see if the theory bore itself out was borne out in results like in a scientific sense you would go okay well let's track this massive increase in the migrants maybe if we go to the housing sector and everything else and we see that the prices have collapsed that it's actually very cheap these days then maybe we can conclude that somehow the axiom is wrong we missed something the axiom isn't what we think it is actually but no you go to the results and you think yep yeah, yeah, shit boxes in Ireland cost three hundred thousand euro or whatever in the city, and uh, yeah, same. You rent a house with black mold for fifteen hundred euro. Everything else, like obviously, this is reality. And there, this is my point being that when you go back to the original article and they're talking about misinformation and disinformation, and they don't specify, you have to go to all the other sources, of course, to just sort of land in on like where the rare moments where they sort of make a specific point what they're actually what what they believe misinformation would be and you realize it's just things like uh yeah ireland got screwed uh in 2008 largely by the eu and uh more people increase competition for scarce resources these are the kinds of things that are, are apparently disinformation so moving on then to the isd again funded by all of these foundations and philanthropies and the state not just the state actually almost every like western state australia ireland the US State Department, the Home Office, or whatever it is, like this thing is as regime as it gets. The ISD, and they did this big report called. <laughs> funnily, I love how they're using all these Irish names and a commission the man and all this. It's getting kind of weird, kind of jarring, big based on what they are. Like they're these internationalist, globalist, tyrannical organizations, and they're like, you know, on Gansey more. Like you know, it's like go on away with your cutesy irish little names okay that's not what you are you're the last thing you are is irish and the last thing you are is endearing and pleasant and familiar so come off the stage so their recent report ishka we um there's just one bit here so it says these were they wrote this big long windbag report about the so-called far right in ireland it says these reports map out the actors narratives and platforms across the misinformation, disinformation, and conspiracy theories ecosystem in Ireland, and analyzes analyzes how they have evolved since COVID nineteen, the COVID nineteen pandemic. This is the best bit. ISD analyzed almost thirteen point two million posts from sixteen hundred and forty accounts across twelve platforms. Thirteen point two million posts. Now, if you actually open up the PDF for their full report, they have it down to thirteen million. 846,794 whatever they have the exact number right how they analyze whether it's manually or automated but either way that's how granular they are they're analyzing all these posts like china has nothing on this this level of totalitarianism all of these different committees and pdfs and reports and detailed maps and infographics and analysis obsessing over what people say free people committing no crime just talking on the internet in their homes or on the bus home from work or whatever they're obsessing over every last detail the web networks the whole lot i'm not an expert on chinese state authority but i don't think they come anywhere close to this the stasi certainly never came close to this nor the kgb or any of this insane um, and of course, so our posts, my posts and yours are being analyzed, crunched up by like Aoife Gallagher or whoever on behalf of Intel, Facebook, the US uh, State Department, you name it. I mean, think of how like like something out of like Dr. Evil, Austin Powers type of level, like never mind Bond, uh, how cartoonishly excessive and extreme and neurotic all of this is but anyway here we are um it just goes on blah 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 so i just wanted to bring up their partners as well i don't think they listed like they used to. yeah okay so these are the people who are analyzing our 13.2 million this is just in ireland 13.2478 whatever million posts and scrutinizing them, them down to the last detail on behalf of the anti-defamation league 
Benai Brith International, um, Cardiff University. Let's pick out the big ones. Geneva Centre for Security Sector Governance, whatever that is. The McCain Institute. Um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. British Council. I mean, I know you all know all this stuff, but like you could be doing worse. It's worth banging on the drum over and over again sometimes. But just to remind ourselves, you know, Open Societies Foundation, of course. Uh, Australia Department of Foreign Affairs, Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, European Commission, London Mayor's Office for Policing and Crime. So they're funding someone to analyze my posts and yours um, for political incorrectness. Um, and and digesting it into an understandable package and suggesting how to combat it on behalf of the London Mayor's Office for Policing and Crime, as well as Ofcom, as well as the Swedish Ministry of Integration, as well as the UN, as well as the US State Department, as well as Facebook, Google, Jigsaw, Microsoft, YouTube, Audible, and even Spotify. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's the crack there. What else have we got? Work, uh, this is just one thing that popped up to me here. Working group established to um, counter the spread of false and harmful disinformation. Your mind does kind of go a bit like funny after reading too many of these words. Like the, the misinformation and disinformation and conspiracy network subsectors. Uh, you know, that's enough to make you need a whiskey, which I'm, I think I'll have one after this. Uh, so... This is group number 10 that I've mentioned here, and this is just on a brief look that I did before I went live here. The group is aiming to publish, oh, by the way, this is recent, like just within the last year. The group is aiming to publish a new national counter disinformation strategy by the end of the year. How many of these reports and groups and committees and salaries and full PDF documents and how, how much of this is there? Where does it end? So a working group has been established to counter, counter disinformation and develop a new national counter disinformation strategy for Ireland. The multi-sectoral group will aim to combat disinformation and reduce the creation and spread of false and harmful material. The group is being coordinated by the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht Sports and Media, that's a department, and comprises industry stakeholders, academics, civil society groups and other government departments. The Broadcasting Authority of Ireland Press Ombuds, I can't, I just can't. I want to get to something real. Uh, um, so a public consultation will be carried out. Sure, it will. The group will be chaired by Martina Chapman, an independent media literacy consultant, an independent media literacy consultant. So while you're out there, while you're out there, like, um, you know, plastering walls or um, delivering babies in a midwifery unit or sweeping a floor or fixing cars or just working your ass off like a normal person. Um, while you're doing that, this lady is an independent media literacy consultant and the national coordinator for Media Literacy Ireland. Cool. Uh, the establishment of the group was recommended by the future... Oh, my God, another one. The Future of Media Commission report. So that's another one. So how much did someone get paid to draft that? And who are they? And what else do they work for? Uh, which called for a more coordinated and strategic approach to combating disinformation. Published in July 2022, the report also recommended the development of a national counter disinformation strategy to, quote, enhance trust and protect the safety, the safety, close the screen, you know, if you, <laughs> um, the safety of Irish users of global content platforms. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I found like one of their little things one of their like the minutes or whatever of one of their meetings and pretty boring stuff but again you look at martina chapman also the names by the way if we're being real for an irish and we're not talking murphy o'toole o'sullivan uh dempsey um doyle you know what's the big name in cabin again Breffany, yeah, uh, but, uh you know you're not getting normal sort of standard irish like heartland names here Exactly. You might get a few sort of ones, but, you know, if you basically went around an average Irish environment and you grabbed a bunch of people, the names wouldn't quite sound like this. Let's put it that way. But, um, yeah, so you have Martina Chapman, independent chair, Seamus, fairness, uh, Seamus Hempenstall, P 
Paul Kilkenny, Fiona Shelvin, Eve Quilty, Austin Dowling, Cahill Dagan. Um, what else have we got? We've got a Harvey, we've got a Bracken, we've got a Forsyth. Um, so anyway, regardless of their names, um, these people work for the Technology Ireland. So this this Technology Ireland, this is the one that the state in the original article. I'll go through it. Oh, I can't. Um, they're the government, the one that came out today that they're meeting lobbying conglomerate and, and that's called technology ireland and one of the people also on this group is from technology ireland anyway um my computer is getting slow wanted to open that back up yeah so it's their minutes um uh, not exactly the minutes it's like a sum up but i mean it's just so boring and yet regardless of how boring the content is we know their ultimate job when you strip away all of this nonsense when you strip away the nonsense and you read through the double speak, at the end of the day, it's people like you guys and posters on Twitter of esoteric Irish history and talking about immigration and, you know, people talking about the trans sort of um, schemes that are going into secondary school or primary schools, stuff like this. It's effectively to crush that, to try and somehow put it in a box and tamp it down and uh, worried about whether it's going to get a seat in government or whether they're making money online from their work or just being able to do their work with money or no money. Um, and yet it's so boring. I can't even bring myself to read it to you, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's just boring minutes, right? But, um, and I'm almost at the end, sorry. I'm getting you here, but uh, I'm dragging you deep here. But I just look at it. it's Emma Elaine Spollen. She was around a few weeks ago talking about asylum seekers or something like this. And these are people who like, are, I don't know this person's history, but all you need to do is listen to her speak. People who, you know, they go to a lot of nice restaurants. They, it's that sort of university faculty that, that you know, people on like seven, seven or eight different boards of this and that and other, and you kind of wonder, like, why? Like, are you actually that talented? How do you see that you just are productive or something? It's not like that at all. It's political insider, insidery. And uh, that's all it is. It's being an inner core of the regime gets uh, uh, very often. I don't know this, but you know, someone's on the board. They're actually probably making a fortune in state funding anyway from the NGOs. But then the husband's probably involved in hedge funds anyway. I don't know this one specifically, but generally speaking, you know, these people. This is the bucky set, um, living the lives of Riley, going on the TV, lecturing about how they get to control us, how they get to flood our, flood our country with foreigners against their will. And the way the air that they have as they do it is insane. The ivory tower that they're up in is mind boggling. And I just want to like listen to this woman, this kind of Atlantic Anglo sort of Irish accent. It, it just gives you a vibe of the type of person. There's all of these other random names that pop up, dozens and dozens and dozens of hundreds of names and institutions all writing these reports and going to fancy meetings in the mansion house and discussing how to crush the proles and all of this. Um, it was my computer. I bet they don't have slow computers. Um, so yeah, it might not uh, play, but it, 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 it's it's just for sheer entertainment. Under. Listen to that voice. Play, please. From I'm the asking, government please. would like people to stop yeah. coming. They're exhausted, and I fully accept that. And I understand we're working in a really hard context but we're also working in a global context of global. enormous, uh, enormous. Uh, you know, <sighs> war in ukraine gaza all around us there is huge movements of people and very few are coming to ireland and less coming to ireland than the rest of europe and we had less refugees and international protection applicants in ireland in 2023 than the year before so the new things that it is about deterrence and it is really well <laughs> Darling, let me tell you about the populist prowls are getting ideas again. What are we going to do? Um, yeah, the, you know, the vile, they're just these people are like, like these people are, are, you know, whining and dining in little nice restaurants in Dublin and they, they live their lives. I've nothing against people living a good life, but um, that's not the issue. It's doing that in conjunction with harassing and monitoring the pros for getting uppity, right? Um, 
that's that's where it gets disgusting you know just be rich just be rich just be an exploiter or just be rich for legitimate reasons for being a productive um and innovative member of society that's one thing but no it's the it's the duality of that the idea that they spend their whole days going around and not just lecturing the proles but acting like they're the good guys and that they are the protectors of the weak and that they themselves are on the side of good that they are the avengers um, you know that they sit around people like Emma Lane Spollen and the rest of them all these people will know each other either through work or from their upbringing it's it's nepotistic right this whole world um they will sit around and have very frank conversations with each other but uh, you know oh they're they're the far right the populist masses again like it makes me sick and uh you know you look back to intel and all of this like it the, the money in this is crazy and uh i suppose um i suppose i don't know what i'd never really worked on a conclusion before in my life but in nonsense and uh they won't specify what they're going to do actually here's a conclusion and it's a good one is that it's a good thing we are they're worried about this they wouldn't be doing all this if they weren't actually worried they are sitting up and paying attention and i suppose they have been for a few years but they're going to ramp it up now they would be bothering with all of this tech companies like i say intel all of these agencies all of these emma lane spollins this whole world of people what's the other one's name i was going to say tracy chapman it's not tracy chapman she's a singer um whatever her name is chapman they wouldn't be yeah um wasting their time if they didn't feel like they had to worry about it and like i started out with what they're worried about is the fact that we get a foothold in the electoral system which inevitably comes with legitimacy that that feeds out legitimacy to the media ecosystem it inspires fence sitters people who are very verbose and very talented and very likable and appealing the next level of people on top of the the people who are breaking the initial wall more people will come in I won't say better people, but more people and also other people who are class in other ways. We will have a, a normalization occur from this, from electoral success. Even if we didn't get a seat, even if we got kind of close on a few of them, um, they're worried. They definitely are. All of these big, powerful, all the king's horses and all the king's men, they are, are worried. And uh, here we are just streaming away. So... I think I'll leave it at that for tonight. I will have a look at any, if if any, super chats or or any whatever they're called. But there's different names for them now, apparently. So, um, I'm so I don't know. Am I getting old? And blind. Um, air only gives five euro. Thanks very much. It says the fear they fear the drive towards a serious nationalist victory is on a low. Sorry, I'll read it correctly because he gave me five. Um, or give me anything they fear the drive towards a serious a series of nationalist victories on a local basis which would provide impetus to propel eventual national level victory it's a good point yeah i agree um or jc uh six euro keep it up thanks very much um you know it's nice of you to uh to do that i i have um i have a link below for you can follow me on social media and if you do want to support the channel um there there are links there as well for that it it helps uh it helps to do this more because uh i can kind of always afford more time to it i'll always do it anyway you know that kind of way so it, you know, it's just that is what it is um i'll be back uh soon i've loads more to talk about there's lots going on thank you for watching and uh i suppose have a good week see ya